insurance is a uh, vehicle that can help people to keep their homes and keep their properties and their families for generations to come. And this is what um, European or white Americans have been doing for years. They've used insurance and financial instruments to uh, avoid taxes and otherwise generate enough wealth to keep property in the family. Now, what is taking place in Strawberry Mansion is, has taken place. I used to, I, I come from Bury Town. I grew up in Bury Town. And um, <clears throat> when the developers started coming into Bury Town, or any developer anywhere, the first thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to be responsible enough to pay your property taxes. And, and I don't know what percentage of uh, non paying of property taxes it is that contributes to people losing their homes, and I'm sure it's quite large. Uh, you know, these days there's really no excuse for people to not be current on their property taxes because the city has really been kind of gracious in granting uh, extensions so that people can make payment arrangements to keep the property. Um, another situation is like what you spoke of with your, your uncle. Um, my wife had a similar experience with one of her uncles that uh, took out a second mortgage on a family-owned property, totally owned, uh, and um, that lost the house due to, again, property taxes or debts not being paid. We have, it's, it's, it's not that uh, so African Americans are any slower or any less uh, aware of how to keep property in their families because our families have been homeowners and landowners from since time immemorial. It didn't just start. It's just that here in the inner city, we have gotten lax, you know, and again, I think maybe 85 or 90 percent of the reasons why we lose our homes is because, you know, ignorance, like not knowing a certain procedure, the steps to take. Um, we lose it by default because we don't, again, we don't pay property taxes or pay them on time or make arrangements. And sometimes our parents may not have uh, been knowledgeable about putting wills in place to make sure that a house got passed on. And, uh, and again, that's something that was a core component in, like when I grew up, you know, my I, I heard my families talk more or less about insurance, not so much wills, but as time went on, people became more understanding of what a will can do. So some, because sometimes people pass away in test state, and that means that they don't have anyone to whom they can pass their property on. So maybe a small percentage of homes in areas like Strawberry Mansion that do get liquidated that way or lost, it's because the person passed away and didn't designate an heir or heirs so that property could, could pass on to them. So there are lots, there are a combination of things that, you know, we need to do. Um, I advocate insurance because, again, a lot of times we, and this may be a side issue, but economically and financially speaking we don't protect our generational wealth when for example when someone passes away in a family they don't have adequate insurance to bury them or properly dispose of their final remains then that leaves the family the unnecessary burden of having to take ten thousand or more dollars out of the out of the family or you know they're left begging, going you know around to beg people to ask for money to bury our people. So again, we, we have to utilize the proper instruments that are out here to use to protect our property, to protect our wealth, and to make sure that we're not doing things that will extract wealth unnecessarily from out of the family, making it harder to carry on. And this is another thing. You know, my parents passed away, but my parents were, um, they owned their property. And after my parents passed away and I inherited the property, I made sure that the property taxes stayed paid. So that way the fam the property stayed with me until I decided to liquidate it, you know. So, you know, these are the things that we really need to take a look at. And the reason why developers, one of the primary reasons why regentrification takes place is because a lot of our people it's not whether you don't make a whole lot of money but if you're just aware of the mechanisms and things that are put in place to allow you to keep your family property or keep property in your family is that all you have to do is do the right things and then you reduce the number of available units for developers to come in for penny and buy for pennies on a dollar and then develop them and then come in and make the money that say neighborhood associations could make um, I, I'm not so critical of this particular state of affairs, but I think that the CDC, if you have a community development corporation in place, 
they are instrumental in making the people aware of what's taking place in their communities that might lead to displacement, uh, uh, disenfranchisement, all those things <clears throat> that can negatively impact upon a property owner's rights within a, within a community that they've grown up in. I mean, you know, you've grown up here, you've been around here 30, 40, almost 50 years or more, and then you're faced with the realization that you might be pushed out of the area that your grandmother, your grandfather's lived in simply because they've raised the property taxes to a, to a level where you can't afford. <clears throat> so again, it needs to be open dialogue. Property and inheritances. Uh, from a parent to child, a lot of people don't understand that when a parent passes away, be it mother, father, uh, or even grandmother, grandfather, a lot of times the properties that are left to them, they are still left in the name of the original purchaser, namely the father, the mother, grandfather, grandmother. And this makes it difficult for them to do anything with it. But again, if you're not properly converting that home to the owner, to the new owner, you run the risk of uh, the property being sold because again, the taxes are going to accumulate and if there's no will or any other mechanism in place yet, that's another reason why a lot of people lose their homes because they don't know how to um, go to say orphan's court and file the paperwork that will enable them to uh, designate an executor or an executrix of the estate so that all of that is recorded. Deeds need to be changed and put in the name of the person who's going to be responsible for taking the property. This is highly important in the absence of a will. And do you help people with that? Yes, I can help them to instruct them on how to, get, how to write a will, how to set it up where they can go uh, to City Hall and file the necessary paperwork to make sure that that property is recorded as still being owned by an heir or an assignee of the of the uh, person who passed away and then that way you make sure because you might not a lot of people would just put things in trust and that's another that's a, you know gets into more extensive explanation but a trust especially a living trust allows people to maintain and hold on to their properties and still be able to enjoy using the property even though it's not in their name. So this is another thing that really people, are, uh, our African Americans should take a look at is putting things in trust and especially a living trust. And so, you know, that's more information. More open dialogue, more open dialogue. And um, printed information is always good, of course. You know, people need a visual assist. So people can read and they know where to go and they know the step-by-step -step procedures to help protect themselves. But again, on another note, as a personal advocate and a strong advocate for the need for insurance, our people need to make sure that they have insurance to protect their jobs, their lifestyles, their families, and their properties. And again, that's a great vehicle by which to do so. I'm finding so, so many, many different mentalities mentality today. It seems hard. It seems challenging. It seems challenging. It seems challenging.